couple of months ago, the KSL investigators got an email from an avid cyclist frustrated by the experiences he was having on the road each day with certain cars. It's an email that they've seen before, but Mike, this one was just a little bit different. Yeah, Dave, indeed it was. Instead of a bunch of words in an email complaining about the close calls and those near misses that he, he then strapped on a GoPro and instead he showed me. So with summer in full swing here, the KSL investigators went looking to see who is putting bicyclists in danger. Is it careless drivers out there on the road or is it the bicyclists, them, bicyclists rather themselves? Boy, oh boy. How fun does this look, right? Rolling on a couple of wheels, fun. Wind in your face, fun. Tiny spandex shorts, yeah, super fun. And zipping along it. Hey! hey! Okay, okay, now that part doesn't look so. Hey, you idiot! Just wait for me! Hey! Fun. You idiot! I'm here. I, w I wouldn't say I'm constantly riding in fear, but I'm constantly vigilant. That's Jim Green. Don't mind me. He's the man on lead vocals behind these handlebars. Avid. He's an avid cyclist. Got back from a 200 mile ride in California. Hold on there, you jerk! Who says riding alongside these Utah drivers is a dangerous game of can you see me now? Hey! Hey, hey. Last November, T-boned a car that pulled right across in front of me. And I stood up, I picked up my bike, I looked at her and I said, did you not see me? The answer, simply put, was no. And it is not uncommon. Numbers shown a five-year span. Utah roads have seen nearly 4,000 accidents between a motor vehicle and a bicycle. That is more than two a day, killing 29 cyclists and injuring 3,600 more. It is sobering. Everybody in the car walks away. Everybody's fine. You got a couple thousand dollars worth of damage. The bicyclist doesn't walk away. I broke my shoulder blade. I broke my cheekbone. The woman lying in this hospital bed is Lisa Hardy. Three breaks in my pelvis, had a concussion and um, a huge tear in my leg. And if you ask her to think back on the moment that she got here. My memories, I, I, I lose my memory about. The only thing she recalls is cycling. They said I hit the windshield and then flew off and I was I went flew off 30 feet from her car. Police reports telling the rest of the story. Cycling on 118 South and Riverton around seven o'clock at night. The sun blinding the driver who unknowingly <laughs> turned into the path of Lisa. I lose my memory about 10 or 15 um, minutes before I was hit. I can't remember. And she hit the pavement just like that. Lisa became a statistic. A simple number, when combined with thousands of other numbers, reveals where the problems between drivers and cyclists lie. So in great detail, the KSL investigators pulled those numbers, showing things like the highest percentage of cyclists are hit by cars on Tuesdays. They most often get hit between the hours of 4 and 6 p.m. The average speed that a car hits a cyclist is 1 to 9 miles per hour, with the average age of cyclists hit between 10 and 24. And while it may often appear drivers are primarily to blame, the fact is cyclists often play a role. I mean, it's constant. It's still happening out there. When getting hit. It's those people that uh, don't follow the rules or don't follow the lanes of travel or operating a bicycle unsafely that uh, cause problems and, and put themselves in danger. And in a single afternoon, KSL investigators found some of those people. People like maybe this guy, casually, rolling through a red light. Or maybe this one, riding on the wrong side of the road. And how about this cyclist, blowing through a light, crisscrossing through the intersection, and zipping by oncoming traffic. Now, did any of these cyclists cause an accident? No, they did not. The fact is, 88% of the drivers in these crashes are partially, if not entirely, at fault. Well, roughly half of that, 43% of the time, does a cyclist bear responsibility. The most dangerous factors, riding on the wrong side of the road, improper crossing, and failure to obey traffic signals. If there's nobody coming, I'm going to go. To some drivers, that's viewed as me blowing through the red light. And let's be honest here, the law views it the same way. Hey, but Green believes both cyclists and drivers have their own safety and risk equation, basically oh, meaning drivers me. may go a few miles over the speed limit and they think really nothing of it. it. By the same token, many cyclists view running a red light at an empty intersection the very same way. A minor infraction 
often with no consequence. Which then begs the question, to what degree of bending the rules does bending... Hey, don't mind me, I'm just a bike. Check the laws, buddy, check the laws! ...become breaking the law. For cyclists, is it riding the sidewalk through a group of pedestrians or maybe running a red light? And for motorists, is it not giving cyclists a required three-feet buffer or nearly causing a T-bone? Well, just ask a cop. It's about the law, but it's really about their safety. Bottom line is this, a bicycle is considered a vehicle hey! with the same rights and subject to the same up. provisions hey! as any other vehicle out there on the road. And the only way the number of accidents will go down... They seem to forget hey! they're driving a two-ton lethal weapon. Hey! ...is for drivers hey! and cyclists alike to obey the law. Hold on there, you jerk! All right, which then begs the question here, what are the laws when it comes to bicycle safety? Well, there's quite a few of them for both the driver and the cyclist. So we set up a link on our website that easily spells them out for anyone. All you got to do is go to our website, ksl.com.